Ah, so welcome back, and uh, this is the first uh, topic uh, that we will discuss in the fourth module, that is regarding magnetic measurements. In magnetic measurements, we primarily concentrate on how to plot BH curve, BH loop, and then um, how to find the different magnetic losses like a eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. All these things we are very uh, in an extensive manner we'll be looking into. And then we will uh, see two types of galvanometers. Already we have uh, seen what is D Arsenal galvanometer, and that was the basis of PMMC meters. And uh, in this module, we'll see what is a flux meter. That's one type of galvanometer, and and the other is the ballistic galvanometer. So these are the topics we that we'll see in magnetic measurements. Okay, and uh, and uh, you might have have you might have had some idea of. Uh, different factors in magnetic systems like flux what is flux unit of flux magnetic flux density magnetic field intensity how that is related to current so magnetic field intensity is nothing but ni by um, l and uh, n is a constant and l is a constant if you fix the coil and uh, the variable is nothing but the current i so h can be uh, varied accordingly by variation of current okay so uh, these are the then BH loop is very important that hysteresis loop is very important and based on that you have classified different magnetic materials and uh, the width area occupied by that hysteresis loop is very important and that is how that is being classified according to uh, that is accordingly like soft magnetic materials and hard magnetic materials. Now uh, one of the main methods that we follow here is the ballistic test that is a uh, typical one typical type of test followed in magnetic measurements that is a ballistic test and uh, there we use a DC supply uh, to measure the value of flux density in a magnetic material uh, corresponding to a particular value of magnetizing force magnetizing force is the other name of magnetic field density or H but 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 we we do not directly measure the value of flux but instead we uh, record the changes in flux uh, changes in flux and uh, that is what is done in flux meter and the ballistic galvanometer we never uh, directly measure flux uh, in a uh, flux meter or, or or ballistic galvanometer we uh, we correspondingly uh, take the changes in uh, flux flux or flux density in a flux meter or ballistic galvanometer you will get you will get a more understanding about these things when we discuss what is happening in flux meter and ballistic galvanometer in later stage okay so before going into the uh, bh curve and bh uh, that is hysteresis loop we'll first see what is uh, measurement of flux density so we can see in figure 1 a simple circuit where we have a ring specimen so uh, ring specimen is very sim is the most simplest uh, specimen that we can employ for magnetic measurement because you don't have you don't have to face any end end issues because it's all, all it's a circle after all so there is no end end effects uh, so there is no leakage issues so that is why we always um, consider a ring specimen and uh, one more thing is that a uh, ring spec uh, ring specimen is is more or less difficult to make so um, that is one thing so ring specimen is actually wound by a magnetizing winding and that magnetizing winding is charged up or they are excited by a DC supply that you can see and uh, you have the provision to vary that DC supply by the help of a rheostat and if you want to know the value of A obviously you want to know the value of A that is current that is by an ammeter and that ammeter will record the value of I and knowing the value of the number of turns of the magnetizing coil and length of that magnetizing coil you can find the value for h okay and you can see a v like a small coil which i have denoted as search coil there at the top and that search coil is also known as the b coil and that is connected to uh, the rheostat and uh, and a ballistic galvanometer through a calibrating coil the the influence of calibrating coil or the use of calibrating coil i will discuss later in a later stage and um, there is a provision to uh, take ballistic galvanometer in and out of the circuit by the help of a key uh, represented by k okay so when we uh, and, and in between the magnetizing coil and the supply you have a reversing switch and that reversing switch is to 
is to change the direction of current so why by changing the direction of current you are actually changing the reversing the direction of flux also because flux always take the characteristics of current so when you reverse the direction of current you are indeed reversing the current the direction of uh, flux so when you uh, constantly uh, change the flux uh, being the being the coil stationary when you change the flux reverse the flux the change in flux will induce an emf and that induced emf will uh, induce a uh, will induce an emf in that surge coil by the process of mutual induction and that mutual uh, that induced emf will circulate a current through the ballistic galvanometer because that is a closed circuit okay so that reversing switch has its own advantage so that reversing switch is to reverse the flux so by reversing the flux there will be an induced emf in the surge coil or the b coil and that will actually uh, cause a deflection in the ballistic galvanometer so uh, as we uh, switch on and uh, as we change the direction of reversing switch we always keep the ballistic galvanometer out of the circuit so how will you keep the ballistic galvanometer out of the circuit by closing the switch k so when we close the switch k ballistic galvanometer is absolutely shunted or short circuited and that is out of the circuit so <clears throat> when we uh, so first we'll uh, place the switch in uh, 2 2 dash and then we'll shift to 1 1 dash so that emf will be induced and the current will be flowing and uh, and then we'll open the switch open the switch k and when we open the switch k the galvanometer uh, bal galvanometer ballistic galvanometer uh, pointer will swing um, many swings will be there to, but the first swing is very important after that first swing there is second swing which is of lower amplitude than the first uh, first swing and uh, the third swing will have lower amplitude uh, than the second swing and likewise so the first thing is very important and that is what we have to record okay so that is taken as theta 1 and let let us go to through the simple derivation that is let phi be the flux link in the surge coil then r is the resistance of the bal ballistic galvanometer circuit capital n number of turns in the surge coil and then n uh, t is the time taken to reverse the flux and the average induced emf in the surge coil is given by that is a well known equation e is equal to n d phi by dt and that is taken as 2 n phi by t why it is 2 n phi by t see uh, when you uh, reverse the position of switch from 1 1 dash to 2 2 dash or from 2 2 dash to 1 1 dash the flux magnitude of flux remains the same because the dc supply magnitude is the same current magnitude is the same so once you fix the value of current when you change the direction positions of the switch magnitude of the current remain the same even though the direction is changing so the magnitude of flux also remain the same so change in flux is nothing but phi 2 minus phi 1 eventually as the uh, magnitude of current is the same magnitude of flux also will remain the same so phi 2 and phi 1 will be equal so uh, when we reverse what happens it becomes phi minus of minus phi so what happens it becomes 2 phi and that is how that 2 is coming out so that is and dt is nothing but the small time interval where the change in flux happens so dt is after all a time and that is taken as small t so that is uh, emf emf so what is the average current i that is nothing but 2 n pi divided by uh, r into t that is the whole thing emf divided by r that is r is the uh, resistance of the uh, ballistic galvanometer circuit and we know that charge is nothing but i t so i we know we substitute that t and get t gets cancelled rest is nothing but 2 n phi by r so let theta be the first throw of the galvanometer or the swing of the galvanometer and kq be the constant of galvanometer expression uh, given in coulombs per unit deflection so when you if you want to find the uh, if you find if you find want to find the charge that is in coulombs, then you have to multiply the whole thing by uh, the that is the theta one, that is the deflection, and that is a uh, that is a point that should be made here. So that is the point that I have made in that in that uh, with that implication. That is charge indicated by the galvanic galvanometer is nothing but kq into theta one. So kq when it multiplied by theta one becomes the charge. So we already know what is the charge Q that is 2 n phi by R that is being equated to KQ um, theta 1. Uh, KQ, Q is actually, uh, actually the suffix of K. It's not multiplied by K. It is a suffix of K. So KQ is a term which is being multiplied by theta 1 that is equated to 2 n phi by R. From that you will get the value for phi. 
so you can see that the output of ballistic galvanometer the flux uh, the that is actually the charge that is you are actually getting the charge and from the charge you are finding the flux density that is why i on, on the onset of this video itself i've told that these galvanometer will not directly give the flux density value or 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 the flux or the flux itself changes in flux itself they actually indirectly specify the flux and flux density by means of charge q okay from charge q you can find the value of flux or flux density so if the area of that specimen is known the ring specimen is known which is given by as by dividing the flux by as you can get the value for flux density and that is pointed out by equation number two and that is how you can find the values of flux density for various values of h and this is the base for find for plotting the bh curve and uh, there are two methods for uh, plotting the bh curves one is the method of reversals and the method of reversals is what we have discussed just now the circuit also remained the same and uh, first we'll discuss that that is very simple that is for uh, so you have found the value of flux density for a particular value of i for a particular value of i means the particular value of h so let it be h1 so h1 corresponds to b1 so if you change uh, or if you increase the value for i then h2 also increases to uh, increases from h1 and uh, b b1 also increases from increases from b1 to b2 likewise for various values of i or for various values of h you can get the value various values for b so that you can plot such a curve like this one that is shown in figure 3 that is um that is called bh curve which is shown in figure 3 for various values of h h marked from h1 to h10 you'll get different values of b marked from b1 to b10 and b10 is the maximum value of flux density in the positive direction so that is what is called the method of reversal so why it is called the method of reversals because you are actually changing constantly changing the positions of that switch that reversing switch uh, plays a very important role so uh, before you uh, uh, take the reading of while you change reverse or change the position of that reversing switch um, mind that you have to shunt the ballistic galvanometer so by shunting the gal gal galvanometer you are constantly or for about 20 times say for for about 20 times you are actually uh, changing the position of reversing switch from 1 1 dash to 2 2 dash and 2 2 dash to 1 1 dash so that will actually strongly magnetize the specimen and that will make a strong induced emf and circulate a strong current in the ballistic galvanometer circuit and after that you just open the switch and not the first throw of the uh, ballistic galvanometer and that is recorded and then again um, change the value of uh, again close the switch k change the value of i repeat the same procedure and not the value of uh, theta 1 again and then likewise you can calculate uh, different different magnetic flux densities from b1 to b10 uh, for various values of if magnetic field intensity from h1 to h10 and the other is the step by step method the figure itself is very simple the ring specimen remain the same search will remain the same ballistic galvanometer circuit also will remain the same only thing is that you have instead of a rheostat in the in the circuit of the magnetizing winding you have a potential divider circuit with various tappings noted from 1 to 10 so that tappings can be changed from 1 to 10 and even from uh, from 10 to 1 in the reverse order also okay so that will actually uh, correspond to different different values of h and different different values of b and in that procedure also you can plot the bh curve and uh, this second circuit is very commonly used to plot the uh, uh, hysteresis loop also what is hysteresis the meaning of hysteresis is nothing but lag so here why why what is the meaning of hysteresis loop that is the lagging behind of magnetic flux density behind magnetic field intensity or the lagging behind of b behind h is nothing but the hysteresis loop that is first you start the test and the starting point is obviously zero or o then you you follow when you vary the value for current h is varied correspondingly b also varies as first b will be directly proportional to h and uh, and that then then slowly the non-linearity starts and slowly the core gets saturated and you can you can see that uh, b will no longer follow the follow h and uh, and that becomes eventually if you increase the value for uh, i or h b will not be following 
h and uh, b will obviously become parallel to x axis that that means b will be independent of h if you increase the value for i in a very large manner okay and that is the maximum point a and uh, uh, when you start the experiment the dotted line is the path which will you will follow then if you uh, reduce the value of current that is if you reach the point the tapping 10 if you come back to come back to 1 through 9 8 6 likewise to 1 the first tapping then it will it will never follow the dotted line or the path we have reached uh, path we have followed to reach the point a indeed it will take the path a d that is another path that is you can clearly see that b is lagging behind h and uh, at the point uh, d you can see that if the when the current is i is zero or when h is zero b is not zero or b has some value and that is called the residual magnetism that height is called the residuity or residual magnetism retentivity sorry retentivity or residual magnetism that that retentivity will depend upon the material or the magnetic material that we are using okay and uh, and then that retentivity uh, you have to if you want to make b zero you have to apply current in the opposite direction or if we have to reverse the direction of current or you have to apply electrical force in the opposite direction so that at some point e the b becomes zero okay and that force electrical force that you apply to make magnetic flux density or reduce the uh, residual flux to zero is called the coercive force on the concept is called the coercivity okay so you have you have to spend some extra energy to make uh, the 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 material fully demagnetized okay so that is another thing and then if you go on increase increase the value of i in the negative direction you can see that it will reach another maximum point in the negative direction and uh, uh, let it be some other point and then if you start from that negative maximum point and if you decide to come back then it will take altogether another path like through g l and back to a and that completes the hysteresis loop so the same circuit shown in figure 2 can be used to plot the hysteresis loop and uh, hysteresis loop has very uh, very very much significance because the area included by the hysteresis loop decides the, whether the magnet is, is a hard magnetic material or a soft magnetic material hard magnetic material means the magnetic material that material is very hard to be magnetized and if it is magnetized it is very hard to be demagnetized so very hard to be magnetized and very hard to be demagnetized such a material is called a hard magnetic material so you have to spend very much huge energy to magnetize and if it is magnetized to demagnetize you have to spend uh, another very large amount of energy so that is what is called the hysteresis loss hysteresis loss so if a, a material has a very large area included by the hysteresis loop that points towards a very large hysteresis loss so when, while we learn machines one of the constant law one component of the constant loss is nothing but the hysteresis loss so for all electrical machines we always choose soft magnetic materials or materials with very small hysteresis loop area and this is a this is the point why because uh, if the area is very small the hysteresis error also will be hysteresis losses also will be very small okay and the soft magnetic materials have relatively uh, very less hysteresis loss that is uh, it is they are very easy to uh, demagnetize and very easy to demagnetize also so these are the things which we uh, which we have to learn uh, in the first part of the fourth module and uh, these notes will be sent to you you can read and understand you can prepare notes also and uh, in uh, in the coming lectures we'll see uh, flux what is flux meter and what is ballistic galvanometers thank you